Want to learn or improve your free motion skills in 10 easy steps? Then keep watching. Hi there, I'm Monica Poole, a quarter to go pattern designer and sewing tutor from Australia. In this video, I'm going to show you my top tips for free motion applique, and it's a great exercise to help you build on your free motion skills. I have a confession to make. I have never free motion quilted a complete top before. That's because I make quilt as you go quilts, where I divide my quilt up into small sections, quilt them, and then join them together using various quilt as you go techniques. So if you're new to our channel, you may want to have a look at my other videos where I show different ways to do quilt as you go. I like to call this technique sketchy applique, and that's because you are outlining the shapes three or four times and then sketching in the detail. The quilt behind me is called Ring a Rosie, and this quilt has been made using the easy cover strip method and I've actually used ribbon to cover my raw seams. And I've also used sketchy applique on this quilt here, which is called the Lovebirds quilt. This quilt has been made in two long panels. I have free motion or sketchy applique, my applique shaped, before joining together using the traditional technique where you can't see any joining strips. So this is a really fun technique to learn and as I said, it's gonna really help you to build on your free motion skills. For this project, I'm using my Sketchy Flowers cushion pattern. Each flower shape has a different motion for you to practice to help you gain the confidence to free motion quilt. I'm going to give you lots of great tips and advice and if you'd like to sew along with me, the pattern is available as a PDF purchase from our website. So here's our sample. The pattern has the shapes that you trace out onto fusible web and apply onto your background fabric. I have then layered together my quilt sandwich, so I have my quilt top with some batting and my backing. I've held that together with a very light application of basting spray and I've just popped in some safety pins around the edge to prevent the edges from curling in whilst I am doing my quilting. To free motion quilt you are going to need your stipple foot or free motion foot, that is the one that has the spring on it. I'm just using a normal all-purpose thread, you can use whatever thread you like. I'm using a size 80 quilting needle and when it comes to the stitch length just leave it as it is because when you drop your feed dogs you're the one in control of moving your fabric around. The feed dogs are no longer moving your fabric through and as I said you are in control. Having a flatbed on your sewing machine is a definite advantage for free motion quilting. <laughs> But I'm going to use my standard flatbed just to show that you can free motion quilt on a regular sewing machine. Something else you might find handy are some quilting gloves with rubber grips that will help to maneuver the fabric around while you're free motion quilting. So now I'm going to take you through 10 steps to help you improve your free motion quilting whilst applying at the same time. First of all, before we start, make a hand frame so you can see where my thumbs are touching like this. Now I want you to just move your work around underneath your machine. Is that sliding nicely? Well it should be. Now what I want you to do is press really hard on that and try and move. Oh no, that's not sliding nicely now. Okay, so one of the problems that people have when they're doing free motion quilting is they get very stressed and tense and they push down really hard and that makes it difficult to glide your work around. So with your hand frame, you just want to rest it on top of your work you want to make sure that your work is nice and taut and gliding around. So that's the first thing that you need to get used to. Now, step one, bring your bobbin thread up to the top of your work. Now, if you have a needle up, needle down button, you can just press that once and again, and it will bring the bobbin thread up to the top. If you don't, turn the wheel on the side of your machine. So pop your foot down first, turn the wheel forwards until it comes back up again and brings the bobbin thread with it. Now I have thread cutters on my machine so I'm just going to have a little tiny thread there which I'll bring through with my tweezers. Next step is to pop the needle in the down position. We're going to do a couple of stitches just moving forwards and quite close together. That's going to secure our stitches and then we're going to just snip those threads off. The reason why we do this is because if you didn't bring your thread, your bobbin thread up to the top, you would find that while you're moving around it's going to get caught in your work. So it's much neater to do that and you won't end up with a bit of a fabric clump on the back of your work. Now step one is to just practice moving backwards and forwards just like this. We 
moving your fabric around and you want to have a stitch length that looks something like say about 2.5 um, just a normal stitch length when you're sewing a couple of things that can help is if you have a speed control on your machine you can set it to just say like a medium setting and then you can try just putting your foot flat down and then all you have to do is concentrate on moving your hands at that nice even speed so just sewing up and down like that just to get used to moving your work around it's also a good time to have a look on the back of your work to make sure that your tension is okay now if you were to have um, loops on the bottom of your work that means that you would need to tighten up the top tension and the opposite thing applies so if you had loops on the top of your work then you would actually have something a problem with your bobbin so it may mean that your bobbin um, isn't inserted into your machine correctly but once you have that all worked out what we're going to do is we're now going to move on to our our proper piece and we're going to stitch the vase and I'll just show you how we're going to do that so starting on the edge I'm going to bring the bobbin thread up to the top in the pattern it's basically just a rectangle and I have marked a just a small little grid and those spaces are an inch and a half apart so bringing our bobbin thread up to the top hanging on to those threads needle in the down position a couple of little stitches to secure and snipping off our threads and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch the little bars or a little basket at the bottom one square at a time just sewing backwards and forwards just like this when I get to the line I'm actually going to turn my work and see how I'm just folding that in a little bit there and I'm going to stitch backwards and forwards but in the other direction and back the other way so I'm just going to continue sewing my basket just with my straight lines going backwards and forwards this is going to really get me used to or get you used to just moving the work around underneath the needle now if you did feel that you needed to put the gloves on with the grips to help you hang on to your fabric while you're moving it um, it's a good idea to do that now so now that we are well practiced with our backwards and forwards free motion stitching we're now going to sew around the edge of the pointed stars in a similar way to sew the pointed flowers start in a corner once again bringing your bobbin thread up to the top of your work and you want to try to start sewing about oh, a bit smaller than an eighth of an inch away from the edge we're going to do a couple of small stitches first of all making sure you put the foot down trim the threads and we're going to sew three times so I'm going to sew one and then go backwards two and three so that's outlining my shape three times and same thing again and I'm spinning in the direction that I'm going to sew each time so it's a little bit different when you're doing sketchy applique or free motion applique because we're working in smaller sections and it is okay to spin your work so that you can see where you are sewing and as you can see I'm sewing oh, about an eighth of, eighth of an inch or a little bit closer to the edge your lines don't always have to be um, on top of each other it can look sketchy that's totally fine there's no perfection when it comes to this kind of sewing so I'm just going to continue sewing all the way around the edge of my pointed flowers now, I just wanted to show when you finish a couple of small stitches close together and then you're okay to cut your thread from there and that will keep your stitches nice and secure so continue sewing all of the flowers the pointed flowers in the same way here are the pointed flowers with the stitching around the edge so now I'm going to show you how to sew a little star shape in the center of our star shaped flowers once again 
needle down, bring the bobbin thread to the top, then put your foot down and needle down and a couple of stitches, trim away the threads and sew forwards, backwards and forwards, stopping in the centre, turn your work and same thing again. Stopping in the centre, this time sewing on a diagonal. And the same thing again. Finishing with some small stitches. Sew the star centres in the middle of the two remaining star flower shapes. So step two was sewing our flower basket and then step three was sewing our star shaped flowers. And now we're going to move on to step four, which is to practice sewing some spiral shapes. So onto your practice piece, just use a cotton reel and just mark some circular shapes. And we're going to practice sewing circles and maneuvering in and sewing spirals. So starting on the outside edge of the circle in the usual way, start sewing around the circle so once and then just keep going to really practice sewing circles you can just keep working your way to the inside once you make it into the center then go back the other way finishing somewhere on the outside of the circle just with some small stitches sewn close together when you feel confident with your spirals, we're going to go onto these row shapes. Now the row shape has got a little bit of a valley on the edge there. Starting from that valley, just draw in just a gentle spiral shape like that and make that little spiral shape like a snail shell onto both of your circle shaped flowers. Starting from the little valley in the same way with the small stitches. Outline the shape three times and then spiral into the center and back out again. And here are our roses sewn with our outlining three times and sewing with a spiral in the center. Now step five is to go back to your sample piece and we're going to practice sewing some scallopy shapes like this. You can either mark it onto your fabric or you can just stitch. I'm going to come back over again like this and back again. Just getting into the swing of sewing scallop shapes. When you feel confident with sewing the scallop shapes, sew the scallop edge on these half flower shapes that are around the outside edge. You'll notice that working in smaller sections is much easier than trying to work in larger sections. And whenever you feel that you need to reposition your hands, stop in the valley of one of your scallop shapes. These longer side edges, they're almost just like sewing our straight lines. So we're just sewing our backwards and forwards, but just putting a slight curve into it. Now I'm just going to go back to the bottom centre of the flower. It means that that little edge has four rows of stitching, but that's okay. And I'm just going to sew some design lines, just sewing backwards and forwards from our centre point here. So on this flower, we got to practice our scallops going backwards and forwards. We then put in action the backwards and forwards stitching, but just adding a slight curve to it and doing the same thing with our design lines here. Now we're going to put them together again by sewing scallops around the outside edge of these petals here. And then we're going to stitch some straight lines and we're gonna finish with a spiral in the center. So putting all of our techniques together in this one flower here. To help me sew this flower, I've drawn a circle in the center and some lines connecting to the petals. I'm going to start at the flower center, 
in the usual way by bringing my bobbin thread up to the top of my work. Starting with some small stitches. And I'm going to sew each flower petal separately. Stopping at the flower center and then moving on to my next petal. And I like to spin my work so that each flower petal is facing me. When my petals are complete, I'm now going to do some straight lines radiating from the center out, just using that backwards and forwards motion. But I'm just going to maneuver around to the center of the flower or the center of the petal. And I'm going to go backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, and backwards and forwards again. So I'm going to do that movement in each flower petal. Once those design lines are complete, I'm now just going to finish with a spiral in the center of the flower. You'll know when you have sewn enough stitching because you'll hear the thread build up underneath the machine needle. So that's when it's probably time to stop. And here are my five petal flowers stitched. So now I'm going to move on to sewing the leaves. With the leaves, I'm going to start at the point here and I'm going to sew one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Back at the center, I'm then going to just stitch in some curved backwards and forwards lines and just an extra few veins just to really give our leaves some detail. And here are my leaves. Now I'm going to change to white thread and I'm going to sew some curls and swirls coming out from my half flowers. So I have three of those. Now if you want, you can mark those in or you can just do those by eye. And you do have your sample piece, so maybe practice some first. But I'm just going to get straight into stitching now. And I might even just add a few extras wherever I feel like it just to fill in my piece. So here are my curls, they're looking really pretty. And I also came back and added in some extra little spirals just to fill in. So to do this, I just drew a circle where I thought I needed a spiral. I might add an extra one in here too, and just stitch those in the same way that I showed you the spirals before. This is a great idea when you're making a quilt and you just need to put some quilting here and there, just separate little spirals really look great. Now. To finish off, I have lost count of my steps, but the final step, step 10, is to do some stippling around the outside edge. So stippling looks like jigsaw puzzle piece shapes. I can show you in the pattern. Looks a little, little bit like this. You can do curls at the beginning and at the end. And so I'm gonna change back to my green thread and finish off with my stippling around the edge. And then I'm gonna come back and give you some extra tips for free motion quilting. I like to start my stippling with a little spiral at the beginning. And you don't have to work incredibly fast. Stippling to me is about making jigsaw puzzle piece shapes. And at this point in time, you can actually start, you can either walk your hands along the fabric when you feel confident, or stop, reposition your hands, and keep moving along. And here we are all finished. 
So here are some extra tips for free motion sewing. Tip number one, make sure that your foot is securely attached and tighten with a screwdriver if necessary because you don't want it to vibrate loose while you're sewing. Tip number two, start with your tension on the normal setting and then check your stitching. If you have loops on the bottom, that means that you need to tighten your top tension. And if you have loops on the top, it means that you may need to check that your bobbin is threaded correctly. Tip number three, sometimes it's hard to tell if your free motion foot is in the up or in the down position. Make sure that it's in the up position when you thread your machine so that the thread goes in between the tension discs. And then make sure your foot is in the down position when you begin to sew. Tip number four, pull on your top thread before you begin to sew. If it's tight, then you're right to sew. If it's loose, then that means that your foot is either in the up position or your machine is not threaded correctly. So lift the foot and re-thread your machine before you start to sew again. Tip number five, remember the hand frame. This is going to prevent your fingers from getting dangerously close to the needle. Tip number six, make sure that you're sitting up nice and high in your chair. Your elbows should be kind of level with the machine bed and this is going to prevent back and neck strain. Tip number seven, try not to press down too hard on your fabric. Remember to just hold your fabric taut and glide. And tip number eight is to just have fun. There's no perfection when it comes to free motion sewing. If you enjoy learning with me, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel? We have a video coming out every week. And if you don't want to miss a video, click the notification button. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye now.